Welcome to the Pickett's residence. This is Bonnie. A fierce guard dog. Kill. Kill. Come in. It's hard to say when I actually thought I was going to do my own promotion there. It's more the case that the opportunity came to me. Uh, the idea, Mickey approached me and said to me, no, Mickey, that was at the gym, he, he spoke to me and said, would I be interested in doing one? Because he says he's been approached and he wouldn't do one if I wasn't involved, basically. So I was like, yeah, no, we'll get involved, you know, I don't mind doing one. And then we started brainstorming a little bit more and then it got a little bit more, it got quite serious quite quick, like, okay, now we're doing one. And yeah, and that, that's how it was, as in like, I think me and Mickey have a very good, similar way of thinking, you know, we both have different ideas, but you know, I think they work well together and I think we can run a very good promotion, you know. We've been around the game for a long, long time, we've seen a lot of shows. Well, The Rise of Champions, the name what it is, it, it, it's, it's trying to give people who are coming up in the sport, because when I first started fighting, there wasn't even a career path, you know, it was just literally, you just fought and, you know, whatever, and it was just, it was, there was no money in it, you just did it because you wanted to compete. But well, now there's actually a genuine career path for young, aspiring athletes. Normally, if you was a good athlete back at school, you go do football, you go do rugby, you go do, you go do certain sports, because that's where you can go and earn money, and you could really have a good career in those. Now, MMA's, join that, you know, yeah, you can go on and have a very good career, successful career here in MMA. Like for me personally, I bought my house because of the sport. I, uh, I've got a foundation because of this sport. You know, so kids now have that opportunity to go on and earn money and do well. So my show is based around young, nurturing young talent. I'm not gonna say oh, I'm gonna get them you know, all the way, but it's, it's a starting block. I want, to, I want them to, feel comfortable on my show, it's gonna be, in my eyes, I like to be a very professionally run show, very organized, you know, uh, and get people the feeling of how it is to fight on the big time, so when they go there, and there's people being a bit strict and a bit, they're not like, what's going on here? They, they get a little bit used to those sort of rules and surroundings, and obviously it'd be on a lot lower lower scale, but you know, that's my, my mine and Mickey's, you know, mindset going to do, my thing to go do over this promotion. You know? um, well, obviously, the, <coughs> it's me and Mickey who are doing the Rise of Champions. We have, a, we have a big team behind us. We have, we have uh, you know, Becky who's doing all, 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 all the social media side of things. We have guys at the City Pavilion helping out a lot. Nick, Alex with the website, Marina, his wife, has helped a lot, and, and Kelly, who is from Rockstar. It, 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 we all got together, so it, it, it's not obviously. I, obviously, me and Mickey are at the forefront and stuff like that. But there's a lot of people helping out with this team, you know. And also, the guys at DMI, you know, they're helping out. You know, so I think we have a good connect, a good connection with our, with our team. And also, sorry, Dan Mabahidi, he's been helping us out a lot as well. You know, he's going to be like the official rep of our show, and, and I've got him kind of overseeing all the officials and that sort of stuff. So. So uh, I think we've got a good formula, you know, a good recipe to put on a really good event. Our show is going to be just what me and Mickey, I've been around so many shows, obviously I'm a veteran of support, I've been to really well run shows on a high, uh, on a high budget, like the UFC, and I've been on low run shows really run well on a low budget and I've been to some good shows with a lot of backing and run terribly and I've been to, you know, so I, I've seen it all you know money doesn't solve every problem you know you need good organization and just you know a bit of professionalism in certain areas you know and thinking about sometimes it's the little details that, that people miss you know and uh, yeah that's what I want to get right and I don't want to compare myself to another show because it's not, it's mine and Mickey's interpretation of of MMA event, basically. Okay, uh, obviously, this is all subject to change, you know, because I, I, I mean, I'm doing the matchmaking for my event, and man, it's, 
and it's not easy. I heard a lot of people saying it's the hardest job in a, in, in a show to do the matchmaking, and I was like, yeah, well, of course it's not. But it is, I feel like Scylla Black, you know, trying to get these matches together, it's, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. But, um, yeah, what I've done, obviously, it makes it a lot easier that we have a lot of guys on the team tight in our, in our stable, so I can keep an eye on those guys. Like, you training well, you're not training well. And then also what I tend to do is try and match our guys up against other good, reputable gyms. The reason I do that for matchmaking, I'm not, I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm a Dana White, or I, yet yeah, again, I'm not matchmaked before, so I'm doing it, but what I think which is key, is if you go to a good gym and you get there, good guys, not only one you're gonna get good fights and people are gonna get tested again when they fight each other, you're gonna get less dropouts. Because if you get someone who's an independent guy or doesn't really train, six weeks ago, I mean, eight weeks before the fight, yeah, I'm up for a fight, they don't train, they don't do nothing. Two weeks slip off, three weeks, and it gets close to the fight, and then they go, oh, oh, oh shit, I've got fighting in a couple of weeks, I'm not in shape. I'm gonna pull out. But if you go to, a, if you come contact a, a proper gym like I have, I've got people at Swiss Army Gym, I've got people at MMA Clinic, I've got people from Straight Light Blast Gym in Ireland, Dinky Ninjas in Scotland. I, I've got some good gyms. And what happens with them, you have good coaches. And if you have a good coach, you're like, why are you training? Get in the gym. And they push their fighters, so they're gonna be fighting, unless there's an injury, you know? So that's what I'm trying to stick to more and, and stick to the, the good, reliable gyms, you know, it will dish out good fighters so I can put on good fights. On the card, it was full of amateur fights. I have about, at the moment, I have 15, uh, 15 amateur fights match, um, which yeah, we have a lot of great guys at our gym, you know, young guys up and coming, like Mike, Akindaru, you know, Ali, you know, I, I, can name, I can name all of them, you know, we have a lot of really good talent, right? But then obviously, then we have a, a little bit of a main, what I call the main event, which is the pro fights. And uh, you know, on the pro card, I say all subject to change. We have Bola Omieli. You know, he's like one of the team captains down the team tie, and he's been around. You know, he, he's a very experienced fighter, very good. And that, um, he's fighting a, uh, a guy from Straight Blush Gym, uh, Claudio Canetti. From uh, he's Italian, but he trains at uh, Straight Blush Gym. You know, he's a good opponent for him. Uh, and then I have like someone like David Round uh, coming over from, from Wales and he's a very experienced guy and this is what can I say on my on my show I have been fighting Bill Bowman who's six and zero versus the guy who's sixteen or thirteen. The guys had twenty nine fights against a young proper son. So these are the sort of fights that I want to put on my show. It's a big test for the, uh, for Bill, you know. He's he's fighting a veteran who's been around. So if Bill wants to go places David Round's the type of guy he needs to beat, but David Round is not easy. He's not there to, you know, just to pick up a paycheck. He's there. He's gonna want to beat uh, a Bill, you know. So that's what makes for a good fight. Then also have Alfred Davis on my on my on my card. That their kids, you know, obviously a, a future talent, you know. And I think our show would help him develop to go on to other shows, you know. And uh, yeah, it's it's exciting. You know, I have a lot a lot of good guys. Um, Obviously, I'm looking to get like Daniel Crawford on my card as well, and uh, yeah, I mean, I could keep going on and on, but yeah, this is all subject to change. But that's the whole, what I say, the emphasis of, of my fight card. You know, young talent also fighting some crafty veterans. You know, uh, to to bring out the best of each. You know, there's nothing worse than going to a, an event and you see that everyone who comes out second wins. You know, like, because they're the home favourite. I don't want that, because especially in the amateur fights, it's, it's about experiences. You, you want to have them tested. So if you're 10-0 as an amateur, you know, you're not being tested. If you're 6-4, 7-3, you've had some fights. You've experienced the hard, you know, losing a fight and coming back and getting better without being in, in a pro and, you know, experiencing that. You do that as an amateur level. So me and my amateurs, I want them to be as tested as as hard as they can, you know. So when the battle, the battle ready when they go to pro, they've, they've been there in deep wars. They, they haven't just won a fight easily and a guy's just fallen over, you know. That's that's what I'm all about. When it's semi pro, or I'm sorry, amateur, they need to be tested. They need to be good fights. And 
don't get me wrong, if I, with my matchmaking, I'm matching guys 1 and 0 versus someone who's 1 and 0, or someone's making their debut, who's making his debut, you can't tell how good these guys are going to be. Everyone's had made the first fight once. Look at Henan Burrell, he lost his first uh, pro fight. Now he, then he went on to win like 29 in a row. So you don't know how good these guys are yet, because they're still early in their career. But what I like to do is, as I say, if I'm O and O and I'm matching against another O and O, it's probably from a good gym, you know. So it's like you know that they're trained with good people. We have a lot of de- people making their debut on my card, but I know they're good fighters because you know what? They're training at the gym. They're training in good gyms, so you know they're good. You know they're ready. You know, so that's the kind of thing. So I'm trying to match up. I'm trying to match up as fairly and as accordingly as, as I can, as as it would let me. Obviously, closer to the fights happen. If there's pullouts, sometimes you get a late replacement and, and, and sometimes people who just fight on two weeks notice the people who don't really care that much, you know. So so or the you know, hopefully you get someone who's maybe fighting for a different show and that show's fallen through or had a fight on a show earlier and then won really quickly and then wanna get back in. You know, but when you start changing the card really close to the fights, that's when it gets a, get a bit iffy. Not bigging myself up, but obviously with the name I have, it will bring a lot of eyes to the show. If some guy down the road just tried to do a show and didn't have uh, the name backing that I have, it obviously it's gonna be a lot harder for me. So obviously I have a lot of eyes on my show, but also because I have a lot of my eyes on my show, I, if everyone knows me as a person, I don't want to do anything shit. So if I'm putting my name to something, I want it to be good, you know, because I'm a very proud person. And I believe, like I say, I've been in the game for a long, long time. And in that case, I'm not just putting my name to it and walking away. I'm heavily involved in it. I'm, like I say, I'm doing all the matchmaking. And I'm heavily involved in the production, and how, how everything's going on, you know. I'm heavily involved in all that. So me and Mickey, mate, do you like that? No, we like this. We don't, we're making a lot of decisions. So it's not a case of I'm just putting my name to it and walking off and drinking a pee of the club by the beach, you know. I, I'm, I'm very involved. and. and that's how serious I am about making this successful, not just for me or Mickey. I'm not in this to make money at all. I don't care about making money. I want to just make a nice promotion. And for me to see younger guys go on from my show into the big show, and for me just to believe I was a part of that, that's, I'll be happy with that. That's what I'm trying to do, you know. Uh, I'm not in this to make a quick buck or anything like that, you know. Uh, I'll make my money elsewhere, it's fine. But I, whatever money, I, what I don't want it to do is make, make a loss, you know. So I really appreciate the support that anyone can, can bring and give, you know. But if I do any earn any money from it, it will go straight back into the show, and you know to make the next show better. And, and that, that's how I believe you can, you can build a good brand if you do it slowly and not do big changes and use your own money rather than you have loads of investors and loads of investors because. When they come, it's great, but when they go, if you had a show that was really good, and now like all of my investors are left, I got you know I ain't got the money now. It's hard to have a really good show and then bring one back down here. So, so I mean, I'd rather do like little small steps up rather than go all the way up here and then go, oh no, I can't survive up here, and I have to come back down again. You know? Um. I, well, basically, I met a guy called Sid Deems uh, at one of the shows, uh, I think it was Juicy MMA, and he, he just explained to me about, you know, you, available to maybe get this on stream, and, and we had a good chat about it, and it, for me it just made sense, it, what it does, it helps me bring other fighters from Straight Blast Gym, from Scotland, from Sweden, from Europe, they could come over and they fans would still get to watch the fights. And so it brings yet again more eyes on my event. The more eyes there, the bigger it's gonna get, you know. So that's for me is it's very it's amazing to have live streams. So not everyone can make it to it. And also it has a capacity. You we can't go over that capacity. So people can't get in the event, needs to still be able to watch it online. Well, obviously I'm doing this is going to be my first show, but it's really hard to say. It all, all depends on how successful this is. You know, it's like 
I don't believe it's going to be a failure, you know, because whatever I do, I always like to make it successful. Um, but also with me, it does is taking up a lot, a lot of my time, a lot of my time, man. and it's can smash making can be very stressful. So like, I'm not going to churn these out like my, my like McDonald's, you know. Uh, I think um, maybe three to two shows a year and make them good, really nice run shows, you know, and then go from there basically. So at the moment, I have no other dates planned at all. You know, because I'm at, at, at the end of the day, also, I'm still a fighter. I'm still a competing athlete, you know. So my mindset is still on my fights. So next year, I'm going to fight on the O2 card in February. So they want me on that card. I want to be on that card. So I have this show in October. Take the rest of the, this, this year off as well. Because I've just had, just having a kid, you know, my first kid. So I'm going to be there for my wife and then enjoy my Christmas and after Christmas, boom, straight into a training camp. And I don't want to be thinking about Rise of Champions. I don't want to be thinking about anything else, just focus on my fight and then fight in February. And then I, I'll be looking to do another event. If you support the sport of MMA, not even just me as a fan or anything like that, you know, if you support the show, shows like this need help. You know, you know, they're not gonna run on thin air. So the needs to support for the MMA community, the young athletes need support. So if you go there, support them, help us run a good event, and then we could do more, you know, and that, that's it. As you know, like I say, I'm not in this to make millions, I ain't gonna try and be the next day in a white. I just wanna put on a nice, successfully organized run show for young athletes to build the start of their career. So if you wanna be part of our future and young athletes future, Please come support Rise of Champions and uh, get your tickets.